The South Africans could access their pension funds via a two-part system earlier than anticipated. Parliament's Standing Committee on Finance has voted to go ahead with the plan to introduce the two-part retirement system in March next year. So the bill will go before the National Council of Provinces, before the green light, and then it'll be presented for presidential approval. It'll only become law once all of those steps are completed. The chairperson of Parliament's Standing Committee on Finance, Joseph Maswangani, says the committee made a recommendation to the National Assembly that the pension fund regime be implemented on the 1st of March next year instead of the 1st of March the following year, that's 2025. Treasury had initially decided to delay the implementation as many financial service providers expressed concern that their systems would not be ready by March next year. But to discuss the implications of this move and how it actually is going to work, let's chat to the head of assurance of Alan Gray, Richard Carter. Richard, it's good to have you. Thanks very, very much for uh, joining us on the program. Good morning. It's great to be on the show. So I suppose the, the first question just off the bat, did, did this catch the retirement industry uh, off guard or were you expecting this to happen? Um, I, I certainly wasn't expecting it. And I think I think most of us were caught off guard, um, you know, because we you know engaged with Treasury um, and, you know, we understood that they reached a conclusion that 2025 was was best all around. So this really did take a, well, it certainly took me by surprise. I can't yeah. speak for others, yeah. Okay, so let's, in, in the simplest possible terms, because this affects a lot of people, and some people are very mm. happy. They think this is a great move. Um, others are saying, oh, I, I'm not too sure about it. Explain it to us. How is it going to work through its proposal? Um, so in a nutshell, once it takes effect, um, all contributions that anybody makes to any kind of retirement fund, whether that's a RA or a pension fund through their uh, employer, it doesn't matter, will be split into two components. Um, one part has to go into a, we call it a pot, but that's just, you know, a name, has to go into a pot or an account and, and be preserved until that person retires. So um, two thirds of, of your savings are almost locked away until you retire um, in, in most circumstances. The other one third would go into a more accessible pot. So in other words, this is an account from which, you know, when hard times come along, you can, you can withdraw money. There's certain rules around how much you can withdraw and you can only withdraw once a month, once a year. It's not a bank account. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but that's the general idea. Any money that was saved up until the implementation date is not in either of these two parts. It stays where it is. So it doesn't affect the money you've already saved, it only affects the future contributions. But then there's a twist, um, and that is to get the system going, there's this concept called seeding. And seeding means you take some of the money that you've already saved and move it into this accessible pot to get it going. Mm. Um, otherwise, there'll be nothing there on day one. And then that means that because there's been some seeding, you could take your first withdrawal immediately. So there's also a way of allowing people to get some access to past savings. So when we talk about, is, is there a, a, a capped amount? Can they take the full amount that, that is due to them? Or is there only a certain amount they're allowed to uh, access? Yeah. No, no, that's a great question. So uh, I think there are two limits that come into play. The first is that initial seeding amount is restricted, right? So it will only be 10% of whatever you've saved and capped to a maximum. Um, and that maximum might still change in terms of the, the final... Um, legislation that gets passed, but um, my understanding is it will be somewhere in the region of 25 or 30,000 rand. So that will be the maximum amount that gets seeded. Once it's been seeded and once you have money in that accessible pot, you can take any amount, mm -hmm. but only once a year. And also you have to take at least 2,000. So just, just to make it administratively sensible, you know, we don't want people, and again, the, the once a year, we don't want people treating this as a bank account. Yeah. It's your retirement savings, but with a component that's more accessible because, you know, there are other things in life other than just retiring. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's trying to balance retiring versus other emergencies. Hopefully, you're not having emergency every month. Okay. So, um, once a year, uh, let's, let's get this straight. Once a year, minimum 2,000. Looks like at this point, possibly going up to a maximum of 3,000. That's 10% of it. No. Uh, can't happen every... No, you're going to correct me. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I didn't get quite right. So, yeah, minimum 
of 2,000, mm-hmm. whatever you take it, maximum of, of whatever's in the account. Okay. So if you have, if you have, you know, 500,000 in that account, in theory, that's what you could take. Um, of course, if you've got that much in your savings account, you've got even more in your retirement account and you're doing, and you're doing pretty well. Um, but as I said, this is of what's in that accessible pot. And on day one, all that will be in the accessible pot is whatever was seeded from your previous savings. And that's at a maximum of, I think it's 25000 or something like that, possibly more. Okay. Let's talk tax on that because I think mm. people gleaming, thinking, okay, great, I'm going to pull it all out and, and I'm going to get it all. Yeah. Are you going to get it all? Yeah. Or is the tax man waiting, rubbing his fingers, thinking, oh, let's go. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get lots of money here. Yeah, it's interesting to think of the tax man rubbing his hands. But yes, um, you know, when you contribute to a retirement fund, you get a tax deduction. So that money um, effectively reduces the tax you have to pay, whatever you put in. And um, if you then take it out again as income, it's added back to your tax. So yes, it has a tax uh, consequence. Um, and anything that you take out is effectively taxed as income. So that means if you're a high tax rate payer, that you're going to pay a big whack of whatever you withdraw. Mm. Of course, if tax is less of an issue for you, um, then it, then it's less of a problem. But the money that comes out is taxed as income in your hands. Yeah. Okay. So lots of lessons to learn here. There really are. But let's let's talk of the timeline here because, as you say, you you yourself sure. were were taken a little bit on the back foot and a bit surprised by mm-hmm. um, by the vote on Tuesday. So that that brings in favour the two part implementation. But this is now less than four months from now. Is this is this attainable? There's yeah. lots that needs to happen. Um, so I don't think it's attainable. Um, and um, I think it's going to be very, very difficult. But just to put it into context, you know, we're still in a period of consulting on the legislation, and there's still major issues with the draft legislation. Never mind the date. The date's like one of the easiest things because it's just a number. But the legislation has got uh, many challenges, and we're still consulting on that. So we're still waiting for a final bill that we can go and implement and communicate to members. Um, we just spoke about tax. SARS has to be read. Mm. You know, it's, it's all very well saying, oh, you deduct tax, but the tax is being deducted at your marginal tax rate, which we don't know what that is. So, you know, th- there's a whole lot of work that still has to be done, both in getting the legislation that enables this finalized and then in implementing and then in communicating. And, and it's, it's, as I said, it's not just work for the pension funds and their administrators. It's also work for SARS. Um, it, it's quite a big quite a big deal. So I think I'd be surprised, let me put it this way, I'd be very surprised if any large pension fund can actually be ready on for, on the 1st of March. I, I, that would that would be a very big surprise. And I mean, let's let's be realistic about it. The country starts shutting down soon. You know, everybody's going to go on exactly. holiday. Um, the the businesses is, is are, are not going to be working. And you know, middle of Jan, when you know things perhaps maybe from you know beginning middle of December up until the middle of Jan, there's nothing going to happen. So that cuts that timeline even shorter. <laughs> so predictions, perhaps, and who knows? This is a perhaps. This is us guessing. Yeah. First of March is a is a really a very ambitious target. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's putting it politely. Yeah, um, it is incredibly ambitious. I think what worries me most about that uh, shutdown period you just spoke uh, spoke about is it really does affect the legislative process. And if we don't get the finalised, you know, properly fixed up legislation this side of Parliament's recess, th- th- then we can't even carry on squirrelling away, you know, through that December period. Um, and, and, and doing our best to get things ready because we were sitting with our final legislation. And, and I think the chances of getting final legislation this side of recess is very slim. So it doesn't appear that anybody's necessarily against this. I mean, many, many would, you know, obviously, and that's where the education drive would need to come in as well, is to caution uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the investors to just be careful. This is your savings. Well, this is what you're going to depend on. But... You know, this at the end of the day is also for people that are living in such debt and are exceptionally desperate to, in, in a time like this, financially, people are really mm. constrained right now. So I imagine people are waiting and saying, I need this money now to survive. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, th- so if you have to try and find a positive here, it's that there is um, so much appetite for this change. Um, and so much demand for a change, which I think is going to improve the system in the long run. 
Um, so it's, it's going to be difficult and messy over the next little while, but at least the upside is that uh, people really want this. Um, and it's going to be good for the, you know, for the retirement fund industry, for the economy in the long run, um, and, and for people you know, saving for their futures. So that's, that's part to be welcomed. It's just a little bit daunting to think how we get through the next little while. Very serious question. Um, taken by surprise, we've gathered that. People are desperate. We've gathered this too. Is the industry anticipating a surge in withdrawal requests and will the systems cope with this? That, that's, a, um, that's a big unknown. Um, and I think different participants would have different views. But there's certainly an expectation that there will be a surge in demand and a lot of people wanting to access um, you know, their accessible parts um, very shortly, you know, on or after the 1st of March. And, and that's the expectation, and that's also where the caution for Russian comes from, because if the industry is not ready, it's going to be chaos. Um, and industry is expecting, a, a, you know, I don't want to put a number on it, but a significant number of people coming forward and, and, and wanting their money. What money are we talking about? I mean, if we had to, I'm not talking people, but I mean, if you had to sort of throw a ballpark figure out there, I mean, if people had to come out and, 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 and draw en masse, how much money are we looking at perhaps being drawn out? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't have those numbers right at my fingertip right now. It's a fantastic question. <clears throat> I seem to recall thinking, you know, it would be great if it was less than 100 million. But it's going to be a big number like that. It's going to be a, a meaningful, very big number. Mm. And, that's, and that would put, I mean, that, that, that also, I can imagine, for a lot of companies would put a lot of strain on funds. Would it? Would this, would this also pose a, a, a big problem to the different um, uh, pension funds and all of yeah. the, those that are operating? So, mm. So I don't want to say it won't cause anyone a problem because I'm sure that uh, different funds have different circumstances and, and financial positions. But I think the, the financial and liquidity impact um, for most funds is, is quite manageable. It's more the administrative impact. It's the, it's the processing um, of all of these requests. It's making sure the right tax is taken. It's giving members you know, uh, certainty of what they're going to get and then giving them that correct amount into the bank account. There's, there's all of that admin um, that's got to be done correctly, and and that's the challenge. I don't mm -hmm. think that the financial impact of the money being paid out um, is going to cripple any pension fund. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, I'm, I'm you know I'm also speaking a little bit out of turn as I don't as I don't run all these funds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that's that's. I mean we just we just asking you on the on the back foot on all of this. But you know just as we <laughs> as we wrap it up. Um, in terms of advice to those, if it does in fact go ahead, you know, a lot of people are desperate, but at the end of the day, you are still working and perhaps getting an income. When yeah. you retire, there's no money coming in. So perhaps advice to those that, that are looking desperately sure. at that and what it'll do to the savings risk. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's always important to try and balance, you know, risks and needs. And, and I don't think it's wise to say to people, don't touch this money at any, at any cost, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's needed for something very important um, and it's a good trade-off and you should take the money and you should use it, put it to good use. But it's very important to think carefully about that and, and have an eye on the future in the long term um, and to really avoid taking the money out for things that are um, not essential because you can't put it back. Mm -hmm. You can't one day wake up and go, oh dear, I should never have taken it and I should never have spent it on that thing that I thought at the time was really important but actually wasn't, wasn't vital. Yeah. Um, so it is a difficult one because people's circumstances are different and you, and you can't just paint it with one brush and say never touch it or, or, or take it and splurge it because either of those are wrong. Indeed. Uh, thank you for talking to us. Um, that, of course, is the head of assurance at Alan Gray, Richard Carter, speaking about uh, parliamentarians voting to implement that two-part system on the 1st of March 2024, there's a lot that needs to happen before that um, and uh, we must see if that actually does happen on that time frame.